Hello students, myself Prakash, your bio teacher. So today uh, we are dealing with competitive questions so far as the first chapter is concerned which is called as reproduction in organisms. So you are very familiar with that. So in NEET there are 90 question appears in biology. So what chapter we are dealing with today which is called reproduction in organisms. So usually there are two questions appear from this chapter but in the 2021 NEET there is one question was appeared from this chapter called reproduction in organisms. So today we will be learning around 30 questions which was asked previous year questions and as you all know that each question carries four option and out of these four any one of the option is right. And also we will be learning why the three other options are wrong and these three options might be correct for other three questions that also we will be learning. So in today's class we will be learning so far as your competitive part that is NEET is concerned the chapter name is called reproduction in organism. See the first question it is on the screen which of the following flowers only in its lifetime the options are mango the option b jackfruit the option c bamboo species and the option fourth one is called papaya see please read the question carefully which of the following flowers only in its lifetime the correct option is bamboo species so option c is the right one as you all know that children in theoretical part we have studied that the bamboo species produce unusual flowering that means once in 50 to 100 years it produce flowers see the bamboo species starts producing flowers once in 50 to 100 years after planting and also produce fruits after 7 to 11 months that is why for question number one option c bamboo species is right one so the option a mango see as you all know that mango is a plant which produce the flowers every year but in some species of mango it produce alternate years in some species of mango the mango tree produce flowers in alternate years and next one papaya say papaya as you all know that it starts producing flowers four months after planting and produce fruits after 7 to 11 months so in this question jackfruit option b so as you all know that jackfruit is a fruit which produce from the entire inflorescence so the entire inflorescence it produce the jackfruit so the b option a option c option d option so for the question number one option c bamboo species is the right one so let us move on to the, the second question see the second question which of the following shows isogamy with non-flagellated gametes non-flagellated means the gametes which do not have the locomotory structures called flagella that's why they are called as non-flagellated gametes the question is asked here which of the following shows isogamy see isogamy please concentrate on that word iso similar see the gametes which are similar in their size shape and structure such gametes are called as isogametes and the fusion of such gametes is called as isogamy now let us look into the options option a sargassum option b ectocarpus option c eulothrix last option is called spirogyra see these are the four options the question is which of the following shows isogamy with non-flagellated gametes so for this question the correct option is option d spirogyra children spirogyra already you have studied in 11th so the spirogyra is a green alga see it is a green alga this produced by vegetative method by fragmentation where the spirogyra divides into two or more fragments 
and each fragment can grow into or develop into one more new organism and sexually by the fusion of non-flagellated gametes. Because of this reason, the option D, Spirogyra, is the right one. Sir, how about the other three, Sargassum, Ectocarpus, Eulothrix? Both Sargassum and Ectocarpus are brown algae. Again, when it comes to Eulothrix, Eulothrix is also a green alga. Now, let us learn in detail. So, when it comes to the Sargassum, Sargassum is a brown alga, which is also called as Phyophyce, which belongs to the group of algae called Phyophyce, because brown algae comes under Phyophyce. It is reproduced by both vegetative method and as well as sexual method. See, vegetative method is reproduced by fragmentation again. But when it comes to the sexual method, the sargassum reproduced by oogamous. What do you mean by oogamous? Because there are three different types of sexual reproduction occurs in algae. Isogamous, anisogamous, oogamous. Oogamous means small, motile male gamete fuses with large, non-motile female gamete is called as oogamous. See, the sargassum is a brown alga reproduced by both vegetative and as well as sexual method. Vegetative method by fragmentation and sexual method by oogamous. Now, comes to the ectocarpus. Already I have told ectocarpus is also a brown alga which is also reproduced by asexual method that is by formation of biflagellated zoospores. Formation of biflagellated zoospores and sexual method is also by oogamous as studied in sargassum. And next one, eulothrix. Just now I told eulothrix is a green alga. At that too it is a filamentous green alga. The eulothrix is reproduced by vegetative method. Again by fragmentation. The body is divided into two or more fragments. Each fragment can develop into a new plant body. And asexually it is reproduced by motile spores and sexually by biflagellated gametes. That means the gametes which have two gametes, two flagella. That's why it is called as biflagellated. So for the question number second, option D is the right one. Now let us move on to the question number three. So what does the question number three is? The eyes of the potato tubers are, as soon as the potato comes, potato is a tuber. It is a type of vegetative propagule. So the question asked here is the eyes of the potato tubers are the options are flower buds, option B shoot buds, option C axillary buds, option D root buds. See very interesting question. So which are the important concept already we have studied under vegetative propagules. So here the question, the eyes of the potato tubers are, which develops from what? See the correct option is axillary buds. See here, potato is a stem tuber. Please keep it in your mind. It stores reserve food materials in the form of starch. They possess axillary buds over their eyes or they are also called nodes and they produced the new plantlets when a part of it having an eye is placed in the soil again it grows into a new plant body that's the beauty of the axillary bud under the eyes of potato tubers then coming to the flower buds see actually children in some species the flower buds are modified into flower or it may be modified into leaf or shoot and coming to the option B, sir, shoot buds. Many shoot systems have been modified into the organs of storage. That is, they store the reserve food materials. And also in some species, many shoot systems have been used for reproduction. They are called as rhizomes, tubers and corms. See, rhizomes, already we have studied under vegetative propagules. Under rhizome, the best example is turmeric. Turmeric and banana are the best examples. Next one, root buds. See, root buds, they grow and form new plants or sprouts under the right condition. Can we get some examples for this? See, the best examples are sweet potato, sweet potato and also 
the dahlia children keep remember sweet potato is a root modification but the potato tuber is stem modification so that is the difference between sweet potato and as well as the tuber potato please make a note of this because this concept you will be learning again under a chapter called evolution which is the seventh chapter so for the third question the eyes of the potato tubers are axillary buds please make a note of this now let us move on to the fourth question what is the fourth question so vegetative propagation in pistia occurs by pistia please keep remember pistia and another one example you have studied under vegetative propagule which is called as icornia garipinus which is also called as terror of bengal see first option stolen the second option offset the third one is called as runner the fourth one is called as sucker so direct question very easy very easy to crack easily you can score four marks because you might be knowing every correct answer carries four marks one negative marking carries minus one marks keep it in your mind see the option for this question vegetative propagation in pistia occurs by offset why it is offset see offset is a vegetative propagule actually this pistia is an aquatic weed which grows or which reproduce vegetatively in the form of offset where one internode long runners which grows horizontally then under the soil surface along the soil surface and gives rise to the new plants from axillary or terminal buds that's why the option b is the right one for the question number four children keep remember pistia it is an aquatic plant it reproduces by vegetative propagation with the help of a vegetative propagule called offset another example apart from the pistia which reproduce vegetatively by offset that is called as icornia or icornia garipinus which is commonly called as terror of bengal now why can't it be stolen because stolen is also a vegetative propagule which is commonly seen in two important species one is called as strawberries and the another one is called as mint and coming to the runner already you are very familiar with runner best example oxalis or lawn grass here in runners the stem that grow horizontally on the soil surface or on the ground they are called as runners and as these runners grows the buds form at the nodes which later develops the roots and shoot system resulting in the formation of a new plant that is called as a runner see here nodes and internodes please don't get confusion with nodes and internodes nodes are nothing but the region of the stem on which the leaves are born it is called as nodes the distance between two successive nodes is called as internode see the best example for runner which is called grass and oxalis last one sucker here sucker the new plants arises from the underground part of the stem best example chrysanthemum so in chrysanthemum what happens the plantlet grows obliquely and it comes out of the soil surface as it grows it detaches from the parental plant and a new organism will grow or a new plantlet will grow so that is the beauty of chrysanthemum so keep remember so this question belongs to a concept called vegetative propagation and as well as vegetative propagules now let us move on to the next question fifth question vegetative propagation in mint just now we have studied in previous question occurs by option offset obviously it is not the option because offset can be seen in pistia and icornia second one rhizome the third one which is called as sucker and the fourth one is called as runner see the correct option for this question is sucker so mint and strawberries just now we studied in the previous slide both mint and as well as strawberries they are the best example for sucker in sucker the new plants arise from the underground part of the stem just now we studied so coming to the first one offset see offset here the new plant arises from a shoot a thick horizontal branch 
at its end. Best example, Icornia, commonly called water hyacinth or commonly called terror of Bengal and Pistia are the best examples. See, coming to the rhizome, the rhizome, it is an underground stem modification which are mainly involved in food storage. That is, they store the reserve food materials. The best examples for rhizome, turmeric is the one best example. Apart from turmeric, there is one more example which is called as banana. So, let us move on to the next question. Question number 6. The sixth question says like this. Gemule formation is a mode of reproduction in. So, here again it comes under asexual mode of reproduction. See, the options are, option A, marine sponges. Option B, freshwater sponges. Option C, marine sponges. Nidarians, Nidarians obviously seal and trata. Option 4, freshwater Nidarians, which is the right option? Easy to guess the option. Say, gemule formation is a mode of reproduction in, because already you are familiar with gemule. Gemules are asexual reproductive structure produced during unfavorable condition. The best option is freshwater sponges. Option B. Freshwater sponges is also called spongilla, S-P-O-N-G-I-L-L-A. See, actually it is also called spongilla, just now I told. During unfavorable condition, so the freshwater sponges produce asexual reproductive structures. They are called as gemule. And this gemule contains a mass of undifferentiated cells called archaeocytes. And on return back to the favorable condition or when the favorable condition is approaching so these archaeocytes comes out of the minute opening which is present at the anterior part of the gemule that is called as micropyle it is a small opening minute opening through this minute opening called micropyle the archaeocyte comes out of the gemule and each archaeocyte can develop into one more new organism so that is why the correct option for the gemule formation is a mode of reproduction in freshwater sponges. Now let us come to the marine sponges. Children, marine sponges reproduced by regeneration. Best example, calcareous sponges. What do you mean by calcareous sponges? Calcareous units because they have special skeleton endoskeleton they are called as spicules they are called as calcareous sponge because these spicules are made up of a chemical compound called calcium carbonate and spongin fibers or it is also called silica s i l i c a silica now coming to the next marine nidarians which is the marine nidarians these reproduce by asexually which may occur in two phases the one form is called asexual form and another is called as sexual form. Best example, corals. There are a number of corals. Brine coral. Then, brine coral is also called fungia. F-U-N-G-I-A. Which comes under sea lenterata. Jellyfish. Jellyfish also comes under sea lenterata. Which is called aurelia. It's a scientific name of jellyfish. Next, sea anemone. Sea anemone also belongs to Nidaria or sea lenterata. Sea anemone, the scientific name is called Adamsia. A-D-A-M-S-I-A. Adamsia. See, in these examples or in these sea lenterata, so the life cycle consists of two phases. One is called as polyp. Another one is called as medusa. Polyp is asexual form. Medusa is sexual form. Here what happens? Polyp reproduces Medusa asexually and Medusa reproduces polyp sexually. See, don't get confusion. The sexual life cycle in Cilantrata consists of two phases. Polyp and Medusa. Polyp is asexual form. Medusa is sexual form. Polyp reproduces Medusa asexually. Medusa reproduces polyp sexually. So this concept or this phenomenon or process we call it as alternation of generation which is also called as metagenesis. Please make a note of this very important. Next one freshwater nidarians. There is only one best example because freshwater nidarians reproduce by asexual method that too in the form of budding. 
that too in the form of exogenous budding which is also called as external budding already you have studied so best example for freshwater cnidarians hydra see hydra is a freshwater cnidarian or cnidarian which reproduces asexually by budding that too by exogenous budding or external budding so the correct option for question number 6 which is called freshwater sponges let us move on to the seventh one see the seventh question if male and female flowers are present on the same plant are individual the condition is called see male which is called as staminate female is called pistillate that comes under unisexual flowers that means if the flowers contains male and female flowers male and female flowers on different plants then it is called unisexual condition let us look into the options option a monoecious option b dioecious option c isogamy option d oogamy see look into the option c and d isogamy oogamy obviously it is not the option c and option d because isogamy and oogamy are totally different but when it comes to monoecious and dioecious you need to concentrate only on these a and b option either it should be monoecious or it should be dioecious now which is the right one see the correct option is monoecious what do you mean by monoecious sir see monoecious condition is also called as homothallic or it is also called bisexual condition bisexual condition or homothallic see if both male and female flowers that is staminate flowers and pistillate flowers are present or born on the same plant or same individual body then the condition is called as homothallic or bisexual condition best example it is on the board coconut maize cucumber these are the three best examples for the homothallic condition or bisexual condition or monoecious then what do you mean by dioecious sir see opposite to this dioecious condition this condition is also called as heterothallic hetero means different or it is also called unisexual condition so sir then what is the example example is papaya papaya is the best example because papaya where the staminate and pistillate or male and female flowers are born on two different plants that's why papaya is the best example for dioecious or heterothallic or unisexual condition next isogamy already we have studied it is a fusion of gametes which are similar in their shape and structure example cladophora cladophora is the green alga coming to the oogamy it is the fusion of small motile male gamete with large non motile and female gamete that condition is called as oogamous oogamous best example sargassum please just you recall second question where sargassum ectocarpus pyrogyra and eulothrix we have studied there that is the best example for sargassum sargassum is a brown alga so for the seventh question right option is monoecious let us move on to the next question question number 8 isogamy is found in see the questions are repeating isogamy first option is cladophora second option is fucus what what is this sir new option come here the new option has arrived here fucus and the third one is human and the fourth one is chara sir this is also new option either it should be cladophora or it should be fucus or it should be chara it is not the option c option c is totally wrong you can remove directly the option c no only you have to play with option a option b option d isogamy fusion of two similar gametes that is which are similar in their size shape and structure that is called as isogamous see the correct option is in the previous slide we have studied cladophora cladophora is a green alga then what is this let us concentrate upon the first option cladophora so already we have studied it is the fusion of two gametes which are similar in their size shape and structure coming to the fucus it is a brown alga see sargassum ectocarpus fucus 
and Dictyota, D-I-C-T-Y-O-T-A, Dictyota. These are the four best examples for brown algae. It comes under a group of algae called Phyophyce. In 11th, you have studied. So, classification of algae, Chlorophyce, Phyophyce, Rhodophyce. Chlorophyce, green algae, Phyophyce, brown algae, Rhodophyce, red algae. Fucus is a brown alga which is reproduced with the help of oogamous type. Oogamous, small, motile, male gamete, fuses with large, non-motile, female gamete. That is called as oogamous. Next one, human beings. Human beings reproduced by sexual method. See, fertilization obviously it is said to be internal, where the growth and development of the young ones takes place inside the womb of the mother or inside the female body. So that is the, that's why it is called as fertilization is internal. Next. Cara. Cara is a green alga. Please keep remember, it is a green alga reproduced by both vegetative method and as well as sexual method. Sir, sexual method, sexual method in all the three modes, isogamous, oogamous and anisogamous. So, for the question number 8, isogamy is found in, correct option is option A, cladophora. So, let us move on to the next question. Question number 9, see natural parthenogenesis occurs in so, natural parthenogenesis, it is a concept we have studied in between the fertilization event and post-fertilization events. So, before we are learning about the post-fertilization events, there is a concept we must learn which is called as parthenogenesis, where we have studied the definition of parthenogenesis, two types of parthenogenesis, natural and as well as artificial parthenogenesis. Let us look into the options, option A, honeybees, option B, all insects. Option C, protozoans. Option D, earthworm. See, easily you can guess the option. Natural parthenogenesis occurs in, obviously it is the option A, honeybees. Honeybees exhibit natural parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis occurs naturally and also regularly and constantly in their life cycle. That is why that kind of a parthenogenesis, we call it as natural parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis means the unfertilized egg develops into a new organism. That is called as parthenogenesis. The natural parthenogenesis can be occur in honeybees. Then how about this option B, sir? All insects. So here, natural parthenogenesis does not occur in all insects, but it may occur in moths, crustaceans, grasshopper, ticks and mites. In these insects, the natural parthenogenesis occurs apart from honeybees. That's why the option should not be all insects. But in some insects, the natural parthenogenesis occurs. Next, protozoans. See, in protozoans, both asexual and sexual reproduction occurs. Say asexual reproduction takes place by binary fission, binary fission where the parental organism divides into two equal sized daughter cells that is called as binary fission and also by budding. But the sexual reproduction takes place by the fusion of two gametes, one is male, another one is called female gametes. Now coming to the last one, earthworm. The earthworm is a bisexual animal which is commonly called as hermaphrodite. See, earthworm is a bisexual animal which is commonly called as hermaphrodites which reproduces by the fusion of male and female gametes. So, bisexual means a single organism having both male and female reproductive structure. Such animals are called as hermaphrodites or bisexual animal. Earthworm is the best example. Apart from that earthworm, you can also write it as leech. Both comes under phylum anilida. And also you can write it as sponges. So, for the question number 9, option A is the right one. Let us move on to the next one. Tenth question. See, which of the following has the longest lifespan? So, it comes under a concept. The first concept you have studied in this chapter called reproduction in organism. That is called lifespan. The period from birth to natural death is called as lifespan. Option tortoise, option B banyan tree, option C parrot, option D elephant. See the correct option is option B banyan tree. 
because the lifespan of the banyan tree is about 200 to 300 years. When it comes to the tortoise, the tortoise is having a lifespan of 150 to 200 years. When it comes to parrot, parrot is having a lifespan of 140 years. When it comes to the elephant, elephant, the lifespan of elephant is 90 years. 90 years the lifespan of elephant. See 90 years elephant, parrot 140 years, tortoise 150 to 200 years, banyan tree 200 to 300 years. That's why the option B is the right one. Which of the following has the longest lifespan? Obviously it is banyan tree. Next 11th question. See the 11th question during binary fission. See they have mentioned over there in amoeba. Amoeba is a unicellular protozoan. During binary fission amoeba, which of the following organelles is duplicated? Very beautiful question. Which one of the following organs get duplicated? Cell organelles gets duplicated during the binary fission in amoeba. See the options are plasma membrane. Might be the answer is going in your mind. Option B, contractile vacuole. Option C, which is called as food vacuole. Option D, nucleus. See, plasma membrane, contractile vacuole, food vacuole, nucleus. In your mind, it's going. It is not contractile vacuole nor food vacuole because contractile vacuole helps in osmoregulation, whereas the food vacuole helps, is helping in storage of food. Either it should be A or it should be D, right? It's going in your mind. See, the correct option for this question is option D, nucleus. See, during binary fission in amoeba, what happens? The nucleus elongates and becomes dumbbell shaped. The nucleus becomes elongates and it becomes dumbbell shaped and divide the parental nucleus into two equal sized daughter nuclei. That is how the binary fission occurs in unicellular protozoan called amoeba. When it comes to the option A, plasma membrane. In amoeba children, the plasma membrane helps in the movement of certain substances in and out of the cell. That is an important function performed by the plasma membrane in amoeba. Let us move on to the contractile vacuole. In amoeba, the contractile vacuole helps in a process called osmoregulation. What do you mean by osmoregulation? Maintenance of osmotic pressure. That means maintaining the water balance in the body of the organism that is called as osmoregulation. Not only it helps in osmoregulation, it also helps in excretion too. Now coming to the C option, food vacuole. Obviously the name itself indicates because there are three types of vacuoles. The first one, contractile vacuole food vacuole. Another one is called as gas vacuole. That is one type of vacuole. See, this food vacuole in amoeba, it is a membrane enclosed sac. Sac means a pouch which has a digestive function. That is the important function of food vacuole in amoeba. That's why children, in this question, amoeba during binary fission, which one of the following cell organelles get duplicated? Right option is called nucleus. Let us move on to the one more question. Twelfth one. See, the process of the development of embryo from the zygote. The process of development of embryo from the zygote. What do we call this process? Option A, gametogenesis. Is it gametogenesis? Let us look into it. B, sporogenesis. C, embryogenesis. Option D, Oogenesis, process of development of embryo from the zygote. Obviously, the option C is the right one. Embryogenesis is a process where the embryo is developed from a diploid zygote. See, zygote is formed by the fusion of male and female gamete. 
then the zygote undergoes repeated mitotic division to produce cells, cells into tissues, tissues into organs, organs into organ system, organ system into a new organism. See that's why the embryogenesis is the right one. See during embryogenesis what happens, just now I told the zygote undergoes repeated mitotic division producing large number of cells. These cells they help in growth of the embryo that's why option C is the right one. Next one option A gametogenesis it is a process of formation of haploid gametes from diploid germ cell by meiosis that takes place in gonads that is called as gametogenesis. Under gametogenesis it is of two types the first one is called as spermatogenesis the second one is called as oogenesis. Spermatogenesis occurs in the male gonad called testes. Oogenesis is a type of gametogenesis which occurs in female gonad called ovary. Now here gametogenesis definition is over. Now what do you mean by sporogenesis? Very important sporogenesis. See it is the process of or production of spores that is called as sporogenesis. Now coming to the oogenesis. Oogenesis it is a type of gametogenesis in which the haploid female gametes are produced from diploid germ cell by meiosis that takes place in ovary that is called as oogenesis. See the entire process of oogenesis you will be learning in a chapter called human reproduction which is the third chapter. There is a schematic representation you will be learning and also the explanation part also you will be learning. There you will be learning three important phases of the oogenesis multiplication phase, growth phase, maturation phase. So question number 12 option C is the right one. Let us move on to the question number 13. Question number 13 is animals in which the development of zygote the development of zygote takes place outside the body of parent female and they lay fertilized or unfertilized eggs are called. What do we call such animals? See the options are VV Paris, option B Ovo VV Paris, option C Marsupials, option D OV Paris. Here the exact or correct option is option D, oviparous that is called egg laying animals are called oviparous. See here what happens in oviparous the zygote develops into young ones not inside the body outside the body of the female organisms and the developing embryo does not depend on the mother for food and shelter that is why they are called OV Paris. But when it comes to VV Paris, here the animals which give birth to their young ones, they are called as VV Paris. Here what happens in the VV Paris, the young ones they directly depend on the parental body that is mother's body for their nutrition and as well as shelter. Best example human beings because in human beings the fertilization is said to be internal that's why they are called VV Paris. Sir what is this sir both has been mixed both option D and A option mixed Ovo VV Paris. See Ovo VV Paris means these are the animals which lay eggs and develop the eggs inside the mother's body. Look at the beauty of that. See Ovo VV Paris are animals they lay eggs and these eggs are developed inside the maternal body that is inside the mother's body that is called as ovo vv paris. This ovo vv paris is commonly seen in shark. Shark is a cartilaginous fish that is called as osteictis and chondrichthys animal kingdom in 11th you have studied. Okay. Next rays, fishes, snakes etc. Not all snakes uh, are ovo paris some snakes are ovo vv paris. Now look into the option C what is this marsupials actually it is a type of mammal marsupials where the babies are born before they are fully developed and then they continue to grow in a pouch on their mother's stomach 
they are called as marsupial animals best example kangaroo kangaroo is a marsupial animals human beings that that is called placental mammals placental mammals humans pouched mammals kangaroo pouched mammals comes under marsupials placental mammals are called eutherians please make a note of the differences between marsupials and as well as eutherians marsupials pouched mammals eutherians placental mammals placenta is an organic connection which is present between the maternal body and the fetal body that is called as placenta that is why for this question option d is the right one oviparous so next move on to the 14th question fertilized eggs are covered by fertilized eggs are covered by calcareous shells which is commonly found in option a fishes and amphibians option b reptiles and mammals option c amphibians reptiles and birds option d reptiles and as well as birds which is the right option calcareous shells which are present around the fertilized eggs here the correct option for this question is option d reptiles and birds both reptiles and birds they are egg laying animals which are called oviparous the eggs of reptiles and birds it is made up of hard shells that is called calcareous shells such eggs are called cleoidic or shelled eggs we call it as cleoidic eggs or shelled eggs but in fishes and amphibians the fertilized eggs are not covered by the calcareous shells and hence such eggs are called as non shelled eggs because the eggs are not covered by calcareous shells that's why they are called as non shelled eggs are also called as non cleoidic eggs next one when it comes to reptiles and birds here the reptiles and birds they lay the fertilized eggs and these fertilized eggs are very hard what makes them to very hard because these fertilized eggs are completely covered by calcareous shells that's why such eggs are called as such fertilized eggs are called as shelled eggs or cleoidic eggs please make a note of the differences between cleoidic eggs and as well as non cleoidic eggs next question number 15 the terms homothallic and monoecious the term homothallic and monoecious are used to denote option a bisexual condition option b unisexual condition option c staminate flowers option d pistillate flowers see obviously either it should be a or b option because c and d are not because staminate flower means what if the unisexual flower contains only male flowers then it is called as staminate flowers if the unisexual flowers contain only female flowers then the condition is called as pistillate flowers now the correct option for the question number 15 which is called a bisexual condition because it is commonly seen in coconut maize and cucurbits or cucumber also we can write see bisexual condition are homothallic and monoecious all the same next unisexual condition if staminate or pistillate flowers if they are present on two different plants that is the male flowers are born on one plant the female flowers are born on another plant so that condition we call it as dioecious or heterothallic or unisexual condition example date palm cycas papaya are the best examples next one staminate flowers if the unisexual flower which contains only andrisium that is called stamens or male flowers then the condition is called staminate flowers pistillate flowers if the unisexual flower contains only female part or gynecium or female flowers then the condition is called pistillate flower so question number 15 option a is the right one next question number 16 children which of the following is correctly matched please uh, give more importance to these kinds of questions so which among the following is correctly matched pair the option is to zoospores chlamydomonas to conidia ginger sucker 
last one onion bulb which is the right option see yeast is a unicellular fungus zoospores are produced it is a biflagellated spores produced from chlamydomonas it is a green alga so the correct option for this question number 16 is onion d bulb because bulb it is a type of vegetative propagule through which the onion develops into a new plant sir why can't it be yeast or chlamydomonas or ginger we will learn see here in onion what happens onion is reproduced by a vegetative propagule that vegetative propagule we call it as bulb see in onion what happens a new bulb arises from axillary bud or shoot underground stem athwa short or short underground stem and that axillary bud or a new bulb develops into a new onion sir how about this yeast zoospores see yeast is a unicellular fungus yeast reproduced by budding it is of exogenous budding that is external budding but zoospores zoospores are the biflagellated spores produced by produced by another green alga called chlamydomonas coming to the chlamydomonas actually say chlamydomonas is a unicellular alga which reproduced by the production of zoospore zoospores is a biflagellated it consists of two flagella they are motile motile spores but conidia conidia they are also asexual spores which are produced in another fungus called penicillium notatum penicillium notatum is another fungus in that fungus the conidia are called asexual reproductive structures next to ginger ginger is reproduced by obviously by uh, vegetative propagule called rhizome rhizome apart from ginger i also given an example called banana ginger banana turmeric also you can write clear so question number 16 option d onion bulb is the right one next question number 17 which of the following animals give birth to young ones see you feel that the question might be repeating but look into the options once please the options are ornithorhynchus and echidna option b marcopus and tyrophus please learn the scientific name under animal kingdom of 11 syllabus please write from sponges to till the vertebrates the classification of vertebrates which is called mammals please learn the scientific name or zoological name very important option c balanoptera and homo sapiens homo sapiens is a human beings the scientific name of human being is homo sapiens option d both b and c which is the right option see ornithorhynchus and echidna marcopus and tyrophus balanoptera and homo sapiens see the correct option is d both b and c sir why ornithorhynchus and echidna are not the options for question number 17 because ornithorhynchus i will explain it later see both b and c the correct option why it is b and c let us learn see when it comes to ornithorhynchus and echidna ornithorhynchus is commonly called as platypus which is called duck billed platypus see here both platypus and echidna are egg laying mammals because both platypus and echidna they are having the characteristics of two different groups of organisms that is one is reptilian character another one is mammalian character reptilian character they lay eggs mammalian character they bear mammary glands and feed their young ones so that is called as the connecting link very important question the connecting link between reptiles and mammals which is called ornithorhynchus and echidna or platypus and echidna now coming to the marcopus marcopus it is called kangaroo kangaroo already have told it is a marsupials marcopus which is a pouched mammal which belongs to the marsupial and tyrophus tyrophus is commonly called as flying mammal flying mammal best example bat bat is a flying mammal so here marcopus and tyrophus mammals they give birth to their young ones directly now balanoptera and homo sapiens 
what what is balanoptera balanoptera which is the largest aquatic mammal immediately you says sir it's blue whale sir obviously the scientific name of blue whale is called balanoptera here balanoptera it is a whale it is an aquatic mammal and homo sapiens are human beings both balanoptera and human beings they reproduce by giving birth to their young ones because of this both option b and option c are correct under the question number 17 question number 18 which is hermaphrodite say hermaphrodite it should come into your mind hermaphrodite is also called bisexual animal where both male and female reproductive organs are present on the same individual or on the same body of the organism options are earthworm hydra leech option b cockroach ascaris hydra option c earthworm ascaris and leech option d ascaris cockroach and hydra the right option is option a earthworm hydra leech earthworm and leech belongs to the phyla anelida phylum anelida hydra belongs to phylum cnidarian or coelenterates so here earthworm hydra and leech they are called hermaphrodites because the organisms possess both male and female reproductive organs or structures in their body that's why the correct option is option a earthworm hydra and as well as leech next question number 19 see the chromosomal number in the meiocytes of house fly please keep remember meiocytes meiocytes are always deployed in nature deployed in nature the cells which produce by meiosis are from mother cell please keep remember the meiocytes there is a chart is been given in the book ncert book that chart you please learn the chromosomal number is reduced to half in gametes you please keep remember this sentence see the question asked here is the chromosomal number in the meiocytes of house fly option a 8 option b 12 option c 20 option d 24 which is the right option there house fly is given house fly the correct option is option b 12 the chromosomal number in the meiocytes of house fly is 12 see here in house fly the chromosome number in meiocyte is 12 see chromosome number in meiocyte is 12 but is reduced to half in gametes now coming to the eighth one in fruit fly fruit fly scientific name drosophila melanogaster its life cycle is very short it completes its life cycle within 15 days or 2 weeks in fruit fly the chromosome number in meiocyte is 8 next coming to the 20 see the chromosome number is 20 in maize plant maize is the best example where it has a chromosome number in meiocyte is 20 next 24 in which organism do we found the 24 chromosome number in meiocyte rose plant see rose plant where the chromosome number in meiocyte is 24 it is reduced to half in gametes that is it becomes 12 please keep remember the chart very important so the next question 20th singami very short question singami means what options are fusion of similar spores option b fusion of gametes option c fusion of dissimilar spores option d fusion of protoplasm singami means it is the correct option is fusion of gametes option b is the right one see fusion of gametes is also called fertilization it is the fusion of haploid male gamete with the haploid female gamete is called as fertilization fertilization is also called as syngamy that is why the option b is the right one under question number 20 so what do you mean by fusion of similar spores fusion of similar spores athwa fusion of two gametes in called syngamy this now we have studied fusion of similar spores the fusion of similar spores is called isogamy or isogamous which is commonly seen in lower organism that is best example we have studied about cladophora 
Next, what do we call the fusion of dissimilar spores or dissimilar gametes, which is called as the fusion of dissimilar spores is called anisogamy or anisogamous. Then what do you mean by fusion of protoplasm? Very important. Fusion of protoplasm is called as plasmogamy. The fusion of protoplasm is called as plasmogamy, which is commonly seen in kingdom mycota that is called fungi where the life cycle of fungi consists of sexual life cycle of fungi consists of three types plasmogamy karyogamy meiosis in zygote plasmogamy means it is a fusion of protoplasm karyogamy means it is a fusion of two nuclei that is called karyogamy meiosis in zygote results in the production of haploid spores that is why the option b fusion of gamete is the right one let us move on to the question number 21 the question number 21 is like this irregular binary fission is found in very easy question irregular binary fission which is also called as simple binary fission options are option a paramecium paramecium it comes under ciliated protozoans option b verticella it is also a protozoan option c amoeba option d goniolax these are the four options irregular binary fission is found in or in obviously it is amoeba amoeba is a unicellular fungus which reproduce asexually by a method called binary fission where the single parental cell divides into two equal sized daughter cells is called as binary fission since here in amoeba the binary fission occurs on any plane that is why it is called as irregular binary fission irregular binary fission is also called as simple binary fission say the explanation is here amoeba exhibit irregular binary fission or it is also called as simple binary fission where the parental cell divides into two equal sized daughter cells then paramecium paramecium it is a ciliated protozoa it exhibit transverse binary fission very important see three types transverse longitudinal simple binary fission apart from these three there is one more which is called as multiple fission multiple fission occurs in amoeba and as well as plasmodium please keep remember next it comes to the verticella verticella is also a protozoa which exhibit longitudinal binary fission and coming to the goniolax goniolax it is exhibit or it exhibits dikaryotic nucleus and most of the time it spend the life cycle in haploid phase thereby the binary fission takes place please make a note of this sir what do you mean by this goniolax see the goniolax it is one of the classification which comes under kingdom protista that is kingdom protista kingdom monera bacteria kingdom protista in kingdom protist the second classification which is called as dinoflagellates di means two flagellates means two flagella the animals which contains two flagella so that is called as dinoflagellates there you have studied two best examples one is called as goniolax another one is called as noctiluca goniolax appear red in color it makes the sea to appear red in color because it rapidly multiplies in the sea and it releases a toxic chemical called saxitoxin s a x i t o x i n saxitoxin and this saxitoxin causes the death of shelled fishes because this saxitoxin is highly toxic chemical whenever it is ingested by the shelled fishes it blocks the sodium channels of this nervous system thereby the death occurs that's why goniolax it comes under dinoflagellates please keep remember because dinoflagellates appear in different color some of the dinoflagellates appear in green color brown color yellow color uh, green color and red color based on the presence of different types of pigments so for 21st question irregular binary fission is found in amoeba that is the right option next one question number 22 in penicillium penicillium is a fungus penicillium notatum the spores called conidia they are also called as conidiospores they are the asexual reproductive structures developed from option a endogenously endo means inside second one exogenously means outside third one 
exogenously in clusters. Option D, singly inside sporangia. Which is the right option here? See, the right option is exogenously in the form of a chain. Exo means outside. See, Penicillium notatum, it is a unicellular fungus which reproduces asexually by producing asexual spores called conidia or conidiospores. These conidia or conidiospores are formed exogenously outside the body in the form of chains. See, in Penicillium notatum, the non-motile asexual spores are produced exogenously in the form of chains. They are called as conidia or conidiospores. Next one, endogenously in rhizopus, Rhizopus, it is also a fungus. Rhizopus is commonly called as bread mold. So, in rhizopus, the spores are produced inside the body of the organism. That's why the spores are called endogenous spores. They are called as endogenous spores. Then what do we call the spores which are produced in rhizopus? They are called as sporangiospores. They are called as sporangiospores. Next question, question number 23. Asexual mode of reproduction in Spirogyra is by Spirogyra, it's a green alga. The question is asked, asexual mode of reproduction in Spirogyra is by zoospores, option B, aplanospores, option C, sporangiospores, option D, fragmentation. See, you must know Spirogyra is a green alga. Already we have studied. So, pyrogyra is a green alga which reproduced by asexual method called fragmentation where the spirogyra breaks up into two or more fragments or pieces and each fragment can develop into a new spirogyra or a new living organism. Then how, what is this zoospore? See, spirogyra is a green alga. Already I have told. It is reproduced by fragmentation where the parental body breaks into two or more pieces and each piece we call it as fragment and later on each fragment can develop into a new individual. Other than Spirogyra, the other organism which reproduced by fragmentation is Eulothrix, flatworms, they are called platyhelminthus, echinoderms, echinodermata, phylum echinodermata, starfish best example reproduced by fragmentation. Now coming to the zoospores, zoospores are the motile spores because they have two flagella. They are called as biflagellated zoospores. They are produced from another green alga called Chlamydomonas. Next, aplanospores. What do you mean by aplanospores? These are the non-motile spores and they are of two types. Aplanospores are non-motile spores. They are of two types. The first one is called as sporangiospores. The sporangiospores are produced by bread mold or rhizopus and conidia or conidiospores. They are produced in penicillium notatum. Just look into the previous slide. In previous slide, we have studied about rhizopus and as well as penicillium. Next, sporangiospores. Sporangiospores are the non-motile spores which are produced in bread mold or rhizopus. So, question number 23, option D is the right one. Let us move on to the question number 24. In question number 24, menstrual cycle occurs in the female of menstrual cycle, it is a cyclical and regular changes in which certain complex events takes place in the female reproductive system in every 28 days. It is called as menstrual cycle because there are two types of reproductive cycles can be seen. One is called as estrus cycle, another one is called as menstrual cycle. Estrus cycle commonly seen in non-primates. Menstrual cycle is commonly seen in primates. Let us look into the option. Amphibious, bats, reptiles, insectivores. The correct option directly you can bats because bat is a flying mammal. See bat is a flying mammal. So and hence the menstrual cycle occurs in female bats. Very important question. Very very important. The differences between menstrual cycle and as well as estrus cycle so far as your theory part is concerned. Question number 25. A strong urge for sex develops in non-primates females. Make a note of that non-primate females at some time of the year 
due to the first option menstrual cycle the second option which is called as reproductive growth the third one is called as previous recovery period the fourth option is estrus cycle just now i told non primates exhibit estrus cycle primates exhibit menstrual cycle the correct option is option d estrus cycle see here in estrus cycle it commonly occurs in non primates that's why they are called seasonal breeders because their breeding activity is restricted to a specific period or the breeding activity takes place only during a particular season they are called as seasonal breeders all non primates are seasonal breeders all primates are continuous breeders but in continuous breeder what happens the reproductive activity occurs continuously throughout their reproductive period that is called as continuous breeders next one menstrual cycle menstrual cycle occurs in primates that's why which are commonly seen in continuous breeders where the reproductive activity or breeding activity takes place continuously throughout their reproductive phase till there the reproductive phase is present till there the breeding activity continues please there also you please make a note of about continuous breeders and as well as seasonal breeders continuous breeders menstrual cycle primates seasonal breeders estrus cycle non primates please make a note of that know the differences between continuous breeders seasonal breeders menstrual cycle estrus cycle non primates primates so the next question number 26 in case of external fertilization external fertilization means what the fertilization which takes place outside the body of an organism is called as external fertilization the number of offsprings produced is you must be very strong towards the differences between external fertilization versus internal fertilization the options are very high the offsprings are produced very high in external fertilization moderate small very small the correct option is option a very high see in external fertilization is commonly seen in aquatic animals fishes and amphibians here in fishes and amphibians since the external fertilization occurs the fertilization occurs outside the body of an organism it produce more number of eggs that means it produce more number of offsprings that's why option a is the correct because in external fertilization the number of offsprings are produced is very high since it takes place outside the body of parent that's the right option option a next question number 27 a scion please make a note of that very important concept it is artificial vegetative propagation a scion is grafted to a stock please know the differences between scion and stock the quality of fruits produced will be determined by the genotype see genotype and phenotype phenotype means the external character of an organism genotype the genetic content of a character in the organism options stock option b scion option c both stock and scion option d neither stock nor scion question a scion is grafted to a stock the quality of fruits produced will be determined by the genotype of whether either it should be scion or it should be stock both stock and scion are neither stock nor scion the option e is it is scion now let us learn what do you mean by scion see the plant in which the shoot system the shoot system is retained but the root system is removed then it is called as scion when a scion is grafted to a stock the root system of the plant has the genotype of the stock and the fruits produced show the genotypes of the scion please don't get confused scion means the plant in which the shoot system is retained but the root system is removed opposite to that stock that means the plant in which the shoot system is removed and the root system is retained that is called as stock so that is why the correct option is scion now stock what do you mean by stock here the plant in which the root system is retained root system is retained but the shoot system is removed that is called as stock 
please know the differences between cyan and stock that is why for this question number 27 b cyan is the right answer now move on to the 28th question seedless fruits in banana are produced through seedless fruits means obviously it comes to in your mind which is called as parthenocarpy the seedless fruits are called parthenocarpy see options are asexual reproduction does it reproduce through asexual reproduction or parthenogenesis or triploid in nature or cross pollination here in banana the seedless fruits are produced through obviously it's a option c triploid what is the explanation for this see the parthenocarpy is a method you know that way the some plants are the ovary directly develops into a fruit in some plants what happens the ovary directly develops into fruit without fertilization that is called as parthenocarpy so in triploid in nature the seedless fruits in banana can be produced with the help of triploid next parthenogenesis it is a process where the development of an unfertilized egg into a new organism without fertilization is called as parthenogenesis parthenogenesis is also called as virgin birth two types of parthenogenesis natural and artificial natural parthenogenesis and artificial parthenogenesis so the correct option seedless fruits in banana are produced through triploid question number 29 which of the following is having longitudinal binary fission so three questions if you go back we have studied about mm, the different types of binary fission irregular or simple transverse longitudinal multiple fission here the same question have asked longitudinal binary fission is commonly seen in option a euglena euglena is a protista which comes under a classification called euglenoids option b plasmodium plasmodium it is also one of the protista which comes under protozoa that is called as protozoa there are different types amoeboid protozoa ciliated protozoa sporozoa under sporozoa it comes plasmodium plasmodium vivax which causes a harmful disease in human beings called malaria next planaria planaria it comes under the phylum platyhelminthus flatworms next paramecium paramecium is a ciliated protozoa which is the right option here longitudinal binary fission which is euglena euglena exhibits longitudinal binary fission see please keep remember euglena is a connecting link between plant kingdom and animal kingdom because euglena is an animal which can synthesize its own food material because of the presence of because of the presence of chloroplast chloroplast is present under sunlight the euglena can synthesize its own food material and it stores the reserve food material in the form of reserve food material called paramylum p a r a m y l u m paramylum granules it is the connecting link between plant kingdom and as well as animal kingdom then how about this plasmodium plasmodium it exhibits multiple fission see please keep remember amoeba and plasmodium exhibit multiple fission next planaria planaria reproduced by fragmentation planaria the scientific name planaria dugesia d-u-g-e-s-i-a now coming to the paramecium paramecium exhibit transverse binary fission please make a note of this four types of binary fission keep remember irregular or simple transverse longitudinal multiple fission so let us move on to the last question under this chapter called reproduction in organism which is the 30th question which is type of asexual reproduction is found in hydra hydra is a freshwater sea lentrata or freshwater nide area what type of asexual reproduction is commonly found in hydra the options budding multiple fission option c sporulation option d binary fission directly the correct option is budding 
See, in that budding, it is exogenous budding because Hydra is a freshwater seal and rata. It reproduced by asexual method that is called as external budding or exogenous budding. So, here what happens? A small bud grows external surface of the body of the parent. After that, they may remain attached to the parental body. Once it grows, it detaches from the parental body and that bud can develop into a new organism and it can lead an independent life. Coming to the multiple fission, already I have told in plasmodium and amoeba, multiple fission takes place. So, here what happens? A nucleus divides amitotically and produces large number daughter nuclei. They are called as pseudopodiospores or amoebulae in amoeba. And each of these nuclei carry a bit of cytoplasm. During favorable condition, the outermost layer rupture and amoebulae or pseudopodiospore comes out of the parental body. Each spore can develop into a new organism that is called multiple fission. And next one, sporulation. Sporulation is a type of asexual reproduction where the organism produce unicellular units. These unicellular units are called as spores and these spores are produced from the parental body. Later, these spores develop into a new organism. Best example, Chlamydomonas, Rhizopus, Penicillium. Chlamydomonas is reproduced by zoospores. Rhizopus is reproduced by sporangiospores. Penicillium is reproduced by conidiospores or conidia. Chlamydomonas by zoospores, they are motile spores. Both rhizopus and penicillium, sporangiospores and conidiospores, they are non-motile spores. Please make a note of this. Next, binary fission. It is a type of asexual reproduction where the parental body or cell divides into two equal sized daughter cells and it is commonly found in the members of kingdom Monera and kingdom Protista. So, question number 30, option A, budding is the right one. Children, so far we have studied about, we have learnt about some of the important questions which might be asked so far as your competitive exam is concerned that too under the chapter called reproduction in organisms. Please, apart from this, solve some more questions under this chapter because already I have told from this chapter two questions may come so far as your NEET is concerned but so far as 2021 NEET is concerned one question had appeared. So in the next class, so I will be coming uh, with one more new concept till that, thank you.